Pegasus. Pegasus. In collaboration with Forbidden Films, a two-part investigation. This story would be huge. NSO was established with the ambition to make the world a safer place. Into powerful spyware. It's a military weapon used against civilians. Used around the world. There is no control over how countries use it. And they have been using it in the worst way you could imagine. Now on Frontline, part two of Global Spyware Scandal, Exposing Pegasus. When you have your hands on a technology like this, the power must be quite intoxicating. You can get into the phone of most people in the world. And no one's looking over your shoulder. Let's do a brief. The base of data is really explosive. It's like a person over your shoulder, a person who will see what you are seeing, a person who will watch what you are watching, your emails, your encrypted communication, everything. So once you are infected, you're trapped. It was against so many people in civil society who clearly were not terrorists or criminals. And you got a real sense that it was a free-for-all. De acuerdo con la pesquisa recabada por The Washington Post, The Guardian, Le Monde y otros medios. A joint investigation by 17 news outlets and forbidden... Activists, lawyers and journalists are reportedly among those who've been targeted by the phone spy. Phone numbers belong to some big name politicians. And SO says they sell the software to governments for legitimate purposes, fighting terrorism or violating local laws. You have here a go-to spy service for tyrants. When we started analyzing the list, we saw a lot of French numbers. More than 1,000 potentially targeted by Morocco. There were journalists, lawyers, activists, but not only. We also saw members of the French government and the President Macron himself. We immediately realized that this story would be huge. Alors, je, je vous explique juste, peut-être. Ouais. Donc ça c'est ça c'est numéro de téléphone. Ça c'est dans la base de données. Ouais. Et... Oh. Et toi, Philippe. Et toi. Oh là là là. Oh. Oh. oh Gérald Darmanin. Ah Le Drian. Ah bah Nick Gérardin aussi. Oh là là. Mais il y a vraiment tout le monde. C'est tout de malade. <rire> la question ça va plus être. Euh... Ouais, voilà c'est ça. C'est qui est-ce qu'ils ont raté Ah les Julien de Normandie. We knew politicians were on the list, and to prove that they had actually been infected with Pegasus, we needed their phones, but politicians wouldn't hand you their phone uh, that easily, uh, specifically if you're an investigative journalist. Après, je comprends tout à fait si vous souhaitez pas le pas le faire aussi bien entendu votre droit le plus strict. Au revoir. 
pense qu'il va dire non lui. Il se trouve que parmi les personnes qui figurent dans la liste, il y a un un ancien ministre qui n'est plus au gouvernement et qui donc a une, une forme de liberté un peu plus grande que quelqu'un qui serait encore actuellement au pouvoir, et c'est François de Rugy. Donc on a contacté François de Rugy en lui expliquant qu'on souhaitait lui parler des choses d'extrêmement confidentiel. Vous n'êtes pas le seul ministre ou ex-ministre concerné, on en a au total 14. Et donc, à son crédit, il a, il a fini par accepter. Et donc, on s'est revu pour procéder à, à l'analyse technique de, de son téléphone et qui nous a permis de confirmer qu'effectivement, il avait bien été ciblé et qu'il avait bien été ciblé par le client qu'on avait identifié comme étant le Royaume du Maroc. Il n'a pas eu l'air du tout surpris quand je lui ai annoncé le pays. Ah bon Il me dit qu'il a rencontré le roi, ce qui est, à mon avis, une bonne manière de te mettre sur les radars de ces gens. Le numéro de téléphone qui est attribué à Emmanuel Macron, la première étape, c'était de vérifier que le numéro était encore actif aujourd'hui et que c'était bien toujours Emmanuel Macron qui l'utilisait. Et donc, le moyen le plus simple de vérifier s'il l'utilise toujours, c'est de lui écrire. Donc, en fait, on va envoyer un SMS à Emmanuel Macron. Monsieur le Président de la République. Nous publions la revue une enquête internationale sur la cybersurveillance. Mmh dont vous-même avez été la cible. Dont vous-même avez été la cible. C'est plus clair, soyons clairs. En plus, c'est bon ça. C'est ça que vous allez lui dire. Ah bah oui. Dont vous avez été la cible. Tu vois. Ah, non. Ouais. C'est parti. Et donc Emmanuel Macron ne répond pas directement à son SMS, mais une heure ou deux heures après avoir envoyé ce SMS, les services de l'Elysée nous rappellent à propos du SMS qui lui a été envoyé. Donc il l'a bien reçu, le téléphone est toujours actif. Ouais, ouais, bah là, on va à l'Elysée, là. Quelques heures après avoir envoyé ce SMS à Emmanuel Macron, on a reçu une invitation à se rendre à l'Elysée, qui venait des services de l'État, pour discuter de ce que nous avions trouvé. Pyramide. Notre rendez-vous, quand même, de ce matin, L'impression que ça nous a donné à tous, c'était vraiment le côté panique. Enfin, pas panique, genre, oh mon Dieu, c'est horrible ce qui a pu se passer, mais c'est plutôt, oh mon Dieu, toutes les implications potentielles de cette affaire sur tous les, les plans euh, judiciaires, diplomatiques, sécuritaires, euh, euh, voilà, et que, et que en fait, euh, ils verrouillent, euh, il verrouillent euh, la, la communication. Assez rapidement, les experts de l'État vont confirmer qu'il y a bien eu des tentatives d'infection ou des infections dans certains cas sur les téléphones de certains ministres euh, et sur les téléphones d'un certain nombre de très hauts fonctionnaires euh, français. Le résultat des analyses du téléphone du président de la République est classé secret défense et on n'y aura vraisemblablement jamais accès. We don't know exactly who in Morocco was using Pegasus. There were Moroccan dissidents on the list, even the king of Morocco himself was on the list. But we do know that NSO only sells to governments and government agencies. We were reaching out to another dimension of the project. We were, at this stage, entering a space, a dangerous space, where we were talking about a country, a state, attacking another one. Each time you look at how a client of NSO Group used the technology, it tells you something about that government. In the UAE, Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum is Prime Minister, Vice President, and of course the ruler of Dubai. Here is a, an autocratic leader, massively powerful.
Princess Latifah is the daughter of Sheikh Mohammed. She had for a long time been, by her account, unhappy about her life in Dubai. She had been uh, incarcerated effectively by her father's regime. I'm making this video because it could be the last video I make. Yeah. <sighs> this video can help me because all my father cares about is his reputation. He will kill people to protect his own reputation. He, he, he only cares about himself and his ego. Princess Latifah concocted this extraordinary attempted escape that involved jet skis, a yacht, and a trip to the Indian Ocean. I mean, it's an audacious thing to do. Incredible even that she attempted it. I think remarkable that it nearly succeeded. The day after Princess Latifah went missing from Dubai, we saw her number entered into the list. And in the days after that, as she was traveling toward India on this yacht, her friends, people she knew, people within her orbit, their phone numbers also appeared on the list. If you look at the dates and times that her number and those of people close to her were entered into the system, you have something that has to be more than a coincidence. Eight days after her escape, Indian special forces boarded the yacht, and then the princess was forcibly returned to Dubai. We don't know exactly why the attempted escape didn't succeed, but NSO's technology was, it seems, from the evidence we've seen, you know, one of the tools that was being used by the state in a desperate attempt to find Princess Latifah, kidnap her, and return her back to Dubai. We tried hard to get hold of a phone that Latifah had used, but we couldn't. So we contacted her friends and her associates to ask if we could check their phones to see if they had been targeted with Pegasus. Given how much David Haig was working on the Latifah case, it wasn't a surprise when we discovered that there was Pegasus activity on his phone. I was infected on the 3rd of August, 2020, with Pegasus, I believe at 3 a.m. in the morning and the next day as well. The fact that the U can be hacked on British soil and that they can do that, it's frightening. It really is. My name's David Hay from Detained International, then we founded the campaign to free the Dubai Princess, Princess Latifah, in 2018. David Hay was actually imprisoned in Dubai for alleged fraud, and it was after his release that he became a human rights campaigner. Princess Latifah began to message him after her failed attempt at escape. This is a picture that Latifah drew of the jail villa Villa 96 in Jumeirah, Dubai, near the Burj Al Arab. Um, and you can see here, beach this direction, where she was held captive. This villa has been converted into a jail. All the windows are barred shut. I can't open any window. Uh, there's five policemen outside and two policewomen inside the house. Uh, I don't know what can happen to me and how long this will last. And if they decide to release me, like how my life will be, but um, I'm not safe at all. About a week before I'd hacked, our secret contact with Latifah had stopped suddenly. The several hours became a day, and then two days. And then we started to worry because that was not normal. We had recorded a lot of videos and a lot of evidence Latifa had that could be used to tell the world about her predicament, the fact that she's been held hostage. At the time I was hacked, we were in London 
with the videos that Latifa had called the evidence to meet media to decide if we were going to use it at that time or not. It was effectively dynamite evidence on that phone. The fact that they know your location. If someone could be listening to us now and seeing what we're doing. And it's that sitting in the back of your head every day. We can't let NSO and the governments that abuse their system get away with what they've done. Because if we do, and if nothing happens and people are not brought to justice, people are not put in jail and people are not taken to court, the next company and the next company and the next company, wherever they may be, will do exactly the same. And it will just carry on, but get worse. ליבה של החברה זה מה שאנחנו קוראים לו חוקרי חולשות. אתה לוקח מערכת כמו האייפון, שעבדו על זה המהנדסים הטובים בעולם, ואתה מוצא דרך להתגבר על זה. אבל יש מנגנון די משומן של גיוס יוצאי... יחידות המחשבים בצבא להייטק האזרחי, לכל מיני, לכל מיני חברות. 8200 היא יחידה גדולה בתוך הצבא. ובתוך היחידה הזאת אה, עוסקים בסייבר ההתקפי של צבא ההגנה לישראל, של צה"ל. כשצריכים להוציא מידע מהאויבים שלנו, זה האנשים שיעשו את זה. יש להם ידע שהוא נדיר. לוקחים ילדים בני 18, מכשירים אותם מאוד מהר ומאוד לעומק. Israel has this advantage of not only developing new technologies and weaponry, but testing it live. And this is something Israel knows it can use to sell. Outside. When you want to control a huge population, like we do with Palestinians, you have to have assets everywhere. So, everyone can be a target because you don't want only the, I don't know, terrorist from the Hamas, but also maybe his neighbor or the... his cousin or the person who sells milk in the corner of the street. If you want to recruit human agents, you need to collect their weaknesses, things that you can use to blackmail. And so part of what A200 does is to collect this blackmail potential information about everybody. If you're gay or if you have medical, special medical condition or you have uh, financial problems or someone from your family has one of those, then that's something we can use against you to blackmail you and get you to cooperate. Israeli intelligence has a strategic view of how their employees should be used after they leave their employee. They promote them. They want them to start these companies. And they see a deep communications, a continued relationship between the government and their former employees as valuable to Israel's national security interest. There's a lot of evidence to suggest that NSO Group had the, the direct backing and support of Bibi Netanyahu's government. In order to sell its product to governments around the world, it required permits, effectively licenses from the Israeli Defense Ministry. 
I decided several years ago to turn Israel into one of the five uh, cyber powers of the world. In order for the companies to develop, they need to make, what do they need to make? Money. They need to make money. Now, the easiest way to make sure that they don't make money is one, high taxes, right? What's the other one? Regulations. Have you ever heard of regulations? We have a problem with regulations. So the policy we have is keep taxes low and keep regulations low. Minimize regulations. There is no industry more susceptible and more inviting of regulations than cybersecurity. It's like weapons. It is a weapon. הסיפור של שימוש בנשק כאמצעי דיפלומטי הוא לא חדש בישראל. יש לזה אפילו מינוח, קוראים לזה דיפלומטיית האוזי. ומצאנו מתאם בין לוח הזמנים, בין ביקור של נתניהו במדינה מסוימת, או ביקור של מנהיג מדינה אחרת בישראל, והיום שבו הופעלה לראשונה מערכת NSO באותה מדינה. לפעמים הפעלת המערכת קדמה לביקור המדיני, לפעמים הביקור המדיני קדם להפעלת המערכת, אבל הקורלציה הייתה כזאת ש... שאי אפשר להתעלם ממנה. דוגמה אחת היא הונגריה, שתחת ראש הממשלה הפופוליסט ויקטור אורבן, המדינה הפכה להיות אחת מבעלות הברית החזקות של ישראל באיחוד האירופי. that the visit was in July 2017. And uh, the operation of uh, Hungary, we know almost the exact date by the database of Forbidden Stories, it's February 2018. So, similarities. ברשימה הזו של מספרי הטלפון ניתן למצוא מספרים ממרוקו, מבחריין, מאיחוד האמירויות ומערב הסעודית. אז אנחנו יודעים שמדינת ישראל רצתה להתקרב אליהם, היא רצתה לחמם את היחסים איתם. תמונות של נתניהו, כמובן לא בערב הסעודית, שזה עדיין לא רשמי, וזה עדיין יחסים שקורים מאחורי הקלעים. אנחנו רואים שמדינת ישראל מתחילה להבין את הערך שיש ל... NSO שיש לפגסוס עבור חלק מהמדינות שאין להם שירותי ביון חזקים, שאין להם יכולות טכנולוגיות טובות, וישראל משתמשת בפגסוס בתור מטבע דיפלומטי, בתור משהו שהיא יכולה להעניק למדינות שהיא רוצה מהן משהו, וככה לקרב את היחסים או לקדם במשא ומתן, ולמעשה... זו התרומה הקטנה שלי לפרויקט המדהים הזה שנקרא פגסוס פרויקט. Going through all the numbers on the list was a huge job. More than 15,000 of the numbers were in Mexico. And one of those numbers belonged to a journalist who was murdered just three weeks after he was put on the list. Was Pegasus used in that case to spy on a journalist or to geolocate him? ¿Sí? ¿El, el, el, que, ¿El que fue asesinado? Sí, es en la lista, sí. Uf, qué fuerte. In 
Federico, es muy grave que se haya usado Pegasus como se usó. Me remito al caso de Cecilio Pineda y de Pegasus Project lo mostró públicamente que su teléfono fue ingresado días antes o semanas antes de haber sido cometido el asesinato. El Estado de Guerrero es una de las entidades más impactadas por el crimen organizado. Hay lugares en donde literalmente el Estado ya no tiene dominio. Las autoridades en realidad están pues, mezcladas con el crimen organizado. Y hay pues, eh, actividad del, del narcotráfico, hay actividad diversa eh, delincuencial. De acuerdo con el reporte de la policía, varios sujetos armados llegaron a un autolavado donde el periodista Cecilio Pineda esperaba que le entregaran su camioneta y le dispararon. No me sorprende que Cecilio Pineda estuviera en esa lista porque el tema que se estaba tocando era serio. Los canetanos ya estamos cansados de violencia, pero nadie eh, tiene segura su vida. También, de verdad, vivimos en una región donde estamos solos, en una región en donde todas las autoridades pues, no, te, no te apoyan. Y aquí uno tiene que defenderse con sus propios hombros. de Tierra Caliente, pues aquí ya de regreso después de estar en dos municipios de la región y pues nos encontramos con esto A Cecilio te había hecho un video venía en camino y quiso dar un mensaje anticipado de lo que iba a presentar después Él dijo que eh, unas horas después iba a mostrar el video de la relación que había entre el gobierno del estado y el grupo del tequilero. Después de eso ya no presentó nada. A él lo asesinaron. Ese día, este... Y al llegar a la clínica, este, yo quise pasar a verlo. Entonces me dice la señora, dice, no, se lo están atendiendo. Entonces yo pensé, pues, que iba a estar bien. Dije, no, pues nada más fue, pues, algo. Ya como a los, a los tres minutos sale el doctor. Dice, no, dice, pues, ya, ya falleció. Y es la única vez en mi vida que, que me he desmayado. Cuando volví, pues estaba toda aturdida. Dije, pues no sabía qué. Y pues ya fue cuando me volvió a decir pues, que había fallecido. Que este. Que, que ya había llegado prácticamente casi muerto, pues. You can only prove infection if you do forensics on the phone and find traces of Pegasus. But in many cases, the phone was not findable. That was the case of Cecilio Pineda. No se puede afirmar categóricamente que lo que se obtuvo de el posible espionaje haya sido lo que provocó el asesinato. Pero tampoco podemos ser ingenuos
we were able to set up a date where we all agreed that will be the day of the publication in 2021, July 18. We knew that the most dangerous phase was those two weeks before the publication. When you knock on the door of the NSO group to say, hey, we are forbidden stories, we are 80 reporters, we investigate your businesses, and we have evidence of a global misuse that is threatening democracy. On rentre dans la phase un peu d'inconnu. Peut-être que en face, il va y avoir une vraie stratégie pour discréditer tout ce qu'on a fait. They can blackmail the source. They can hack me, uh, one of the person of the team. They can uh, follow us. They can come into our offices. By now, the members of the consortium had managed to do forensics on over 60 phones connected to numbers on the list. And we had forensic proof that at least 37 phones had been targeted or infected with Pegasus. The more publication day was approaching, the more paranoid we all became. Before publication, we already had that habit to switching off the phones or even our computers before having any conversation about the investigation. So most of the day, we were living and working without our phones or even our computers. So we had different ways of working. We had other devices we could work on. Il faut s'attendre à ça. Il faut s'attendre à ce que même nos partenaires aient des réserves parce que NSO les aura approchés ou des, des proches de NSO les auront approchés pour leur dire qu'en en fait, on s'est trompé. I remember that day, clicking on the button sent. I was sending the official request for command from the 80 reporters with dozens of questions inside. We were giving a deadline to the NSO group and to other state actors. And we were expecting some answers. This is Laurent Richard from uh, Forbidden Stories. How are you doing? Well, I'm good. I'm good. Yeah, th thank you for t taking the time to, to answer. Um, uh, I was just wondering if you um, are planning to answer our question. Yeah, you, you can see it in your email now. Yeah. Okay, I see it. Thank you. Okay, Bye. thank you. Bye. Bye. Okay. What we got is an email from the NSO group saying that all you think is wrong, thank you, best regards. NSO group firmly denies false claims made in your report, which many of them are uncorroborated theories that raise serious doubts about the re reliability of your sources, as well as the basis of your story. Uh, it's incredible. It's incredible. But then when I woke up in the next morning, I opened my phone and I saw that NSO had sent letters from lawyers to most of the partners on all continents to threaten them and to tell them that if you publish anything, we will sue you. It's a bit tense here, if I'm honest. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we've had a provisional response from NSO to the Washington Post, um, and we will have the formal another response from them to us in about 15, 20 minutes. So we're going to keep this call really quick. Um, the stakes are really high when you do this kind of reporting. Here was a company valued at over a billion dollars, and the NSO group and its clients, these governments, were not going to put their hands up and confess to this activity. They were fighting it as hard as they possibly could. All going well if we're proceeding with this project. I think the crunch point really is going to be in the next 12 hours. What do you mean in the sense of if we are proceeding, Paul? 
Yeah. Is that in doubt? Well, it's all it's 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 never it's never confirmed until it's confirmed, right? We can confirm at least au moins trois noms de votre enquête. Emmanuel Macron, King Mohamed VI et Tedros Ghebreyesus ne sont pas et n'ont jamais été des cibles ou sélectionnés comme cibles par des clients de NSO Group. Ouais, on a NSO qui demande nominalement pour euh, euh, le PR, euh, Mohamed VI et euh, le mec ah. de l'OMS. Ah. Je, je suis en route pour le bureau de la direction. A <rire> tout de suite. En mars 2019, alors que le président Macron suit très près la crise politique qui secoue l'Algérie, c'est à ce moment-là que l'un de ses numéros est enregistré par un service marocain. So, Paul, just to be 100% clear, you guys are ready to hit the button on a version of the story in 42 minutes. Of the heads of state story? Heads of state only. We're not ready now, but in 42 minutes, we will be ready. <laughs> <laughs> Here we were simultaneously publishing 17 different media outlets all over the world in several different languages, all at the same time, on the same minute, on the same day, after months of investigating. <laughs> An investigation into the NSO group. On this? That's okay. I just say, yeah, and its clients. Let's jump into it. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Zero, it's parti. Allez. And. We've done it. Tiff. On est bon, 18. Woo! 18. So the story is now live. An explosive investigation from the Washington Post and a consortium of media partners. Activists, lawyers, and journalists are reportedly among those. De la utilización de Pegasus en el mundo. L'Elysée prend cette affaire avec beaucoup de sérieux. Il faut pas que les choses retombent dans quelques jours. Pegasus est utilisé par des États pour cibler des journalistes, des politiques et même des chefs d'État. What can be done to protect our country from commercial spyware, the kind of threat that is now being reported at the top of the news across the nation? There had been reporters who've been doing stories on Pegasus for years. This sort of tipped the scale because it was in so many countries It was against so many people in civil society who clearly were not terrorists or criminals. And you got a real sense that it was, an, it was a free-for-all. We even found out afterwards that the FBI considered using a version of Pegasus that could hack into US phones. But that fell apart, and the Biden administration actually blacklisted NSO Group. They've made a bigger deal than I would have expected against not just an Israeli company, but really they're criticizing the Israeli government for allowing this to happen, because it actually could not happen without the Israeli government's permission. You have here a go-to spy service for tyrants. What the executives of these companies and the engineers are hoping for most is to make a whole lot of money and do it in a way where there's minimal regulation and minimal oversight. A U.S. appeals court is allowing WhatsApp messaging service to move forward with a lawsuit against NSO Group over allegedly targeting... Silicon Valley has a big role to play. Company like WhatsApp, company like Apple, 
they are suing NSO. They are the ones with money. They are the ones who promise you safety and security. All we've seen NSO Group is deny, 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 and that's shown up entirely through the legal process as well. The way I think about it is tech companies can and should do everything they can to make their software as secure as possible. But at the end of the day, if there's no consequences for people who try to break that software to commit human rights abuses, then there will always be people trying to do it. It's just like the only solution to stopping um, bank robbery is not to have the best technology in banks. Yes, you do that too. It's also that bank robbers get caught and have consequences for trying to, to rob banks. And we need that for the spyware industry. Pegasus spyware is once again back in the spotlight. This time, for targeting pro-independence supporters in Spain's Several Catalonia. Several members of Poland's opposition have produced evidence they were hacked by Pegasus. This scandal software. is being dubbed the Polish Watergate. In Europe, we were discovering new victims of the spyware, and new countries were accused of using Pegasus to spy on their opponents. At the European Parliament, representatives from NSO agreed to answer questions from politicians. It was the first time they'd done this. Ich bin Hannah Neumann, Mitglied des Europäischen Parlaments. Ich bin stellvertretende Vorsitzende des Menschenrechtsausschusses. Es war schon ein langer Weg, zu diesem ähm, Untersuchungsausschuss zu kommen. Die zentrale Herausforderung wird sein, wie stark kooperieren die Akteure mit uns. We know that NSO is now on the market. So maybe they are trying to polish their image. That would be interesting to see. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. On behalf of NSO, I want to thank the members of the Committee of Inquiry for having us here today. Before we begin, we should note that there are limits to the information we can share with the Committee and others. As you know, NSO is a private company providing export-controlled cyber intelligence technologies only and exclusive to government agencies for the purpose of preventing and investigating terrorism and other serious crimes. As a result, we are unable to share details about our customers as well as the crimes prevented and criminals tracked and apprehended using our technologies or trade secrets of the technology. It is not true that NSO Group operates Pegasus and collects information about individuals. It is not true that NSO Group sells its technology to private companies. The issues that came up about uh, Jamal Khakhugji, about President Macron, Macron, the system was not used on those numbers. I will go immediately into the Q&A session of today's meeting. We already have about 15 members who've asked for the floor. Have you ever terminated a contract with an EU member state? We have terminated contracts with uh, EU member states, but to get into again the exact uh, numbers. That's be. fine. Thank you. Next question. If a country does not give you a permission to audit is that a reason for you to terminate a contract, yes or no? I stated before, if they do not allow us to do the audit and do not participate in the, provide us with the information needed in our investigation, yes, that is a reason to terminate a contract. I can state with you that we've terminated eight customers over the past uh, several years. Have United Arab Emirates and Saudi Arabia ever gone through your due diligence check and have they passed it? As I said, I'm not going to respond to questions regarding specific uh, potential customers. Given that UAE and Saudi Arabia have been using Pegasus software, who are legitimate actors to issue warrants in these countries according to your checks? Again, I repeat it again, and I'm not going to respond to questions regarding specific customers. Yes, I hear. Vitam Pana. Vitam Pana. 
Jestem z Polski. Czy o szpiegowaniu szefa kampanii wyborczej w Polsce dowiedzieliście się w roku 2019, kiedy to miało miejsce według doniesień medialnych? I cannot, and again I repeat, I cannot because of various confidentiality and secrecy issues, I cannot get into specific uh, questions regarding specific customers or specific cases. Ezzel kapcsolatban lennének azok a kérdéseim, hogy van-e még továbbra is élő szerződésük a magyar kormányjal, mennyiben nincs élő szerződésük, akkor azt mikor és milyen okból bontották fel, illetve van arra lehetőség, hogy a magyar kormány újra szerződjön az NSO, NSO csoporttal, újra megkösse ezt a szerződést. First of all, every customer that we sell to goes through the due diligence review Uh, in advance, and uh, if uh, and, and very often, if uh, concerns are raised regarding the rule of law, because what we're looking at is also rule of law, and any country that we've decided to sell to uh, uh, has got, has been approved um, in oh, this please, matter. Please, please stop the stop the storytelling. Uh, I'm going to continue in Hungarian. Direct nem mondom Magyarország példát, tehát hogy folyamatosan elítélnek egy tagállamot különböző jogállamisági kritériumok alapján. Akkor önök számára az miért jelent biztonságos országot, miért jelent önök számára garanciát? Ez a kérdésem. Köszönöm szépen. Again, uh, I said, I'm not, not again, I'm it was a new have... question. So please. <laughs> I have not said, we have not said that uh, we have determined recently that Hungary is or is not a secure country. You did consider it secure excuse because me, you sold me, the stuff uh, to excuse them. Excuse me, I said now we were... Let, let's keep a little bit of order in the meeting as well. I understand there is frustration, but you have the concrete question, you have a concrete answer, and uh, please. So you keep repeating the same thing. And there seems to be a complete disconnect between reality and between what you're saying. This is like, you know, it's an insult to our intelligence, sorry. כרגע יש עזיבה של בכירים ב-NSO, והם קריטיים ליכולת של הארגון הזה להמשיך להתקיים. אז בתוך סט האילוצים הזה, שהתזרים נפגע, אנשים עוזבים, ויש חוב גדול לשרת, מי שקורא עיתונים חושב שחצי מאוכלוסיית העולם יושבים עליה עם פגסוס. אני אומר לך שאף אחד לא האזין לנשיא צרפת ולחברי הפרלמנט הצרפתים, לכלים שלנו ולטכנולוגיה שלנו, לא היה שום קשר, בשום צורה ודרך, לא לרצח, לא לחשוק ג'י, לא לאנשים שמסביבו. לא ארוסתו, חברו. לא, לא, אני יודע שזה פורסם, אני יודע שזה פורסם, ואני אומר לך, זה שקר גס, אנחנו הוכחנו כמה וכמה פעמים שזה לא נכון. ובאמת, צריך פעם אחת להפסיק עם השקר הזה. מה ישראל עושה אחרי שפרשת פגסוס מתפוצצת? ברמה הפורמלית הוקמה תת-ועדה בתוך ועדת החוץ והביטחון שמוביל רם בן ברק. וכשאני אומר פורמלי, גם הפגישות האלה נעשות מאחורי דלתיים סגורות, ואנחנו לא יודעים מה היה בדיונים, אנחנו לא רואים פרוטוקול, אנחנו לא מוזמנים להשתתף, ואנחנו לא יודעים מה ההחלטות. טוב, שמי רם בן ברק. לפני זה עשיתי קריירה ארוכה במוסד, והגעתי עד לדרגה של סגן ראש המוסד. כרגע אני יושב ראש ועדת חוץ וביטחון של הכנסת. אני בדקתי האם, ה- האם ה- המערכת הישראלית, הרגולציה שלה היא, היא טובה מספיק. אני חושב שעשו כמה, כמה שיפורים, אבל בגדול, איך שהיא עובדת היא שיטה... ש... שאני מצאתי אותה טובה ואפילו מאוד מאוד מחמירה. אבל הפרמטר המרכזי הוא שהמידת שה... האמון שנותנים במדינה, שתעשה את מה, ש... את מה שהתחייבה לעשות ולא תפרוץ את זה. כי החברות האלה, 
זה כמו שתמכרי F-35 למדינה והיא תעשה בזה, תפציץ בזה אזרחים במדינה דמוקרטית אחרת. אז תגידי, וואי, 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 צריך עכשיו להחרים את מרטין לוקרייט ביקארז, שמישהו עשה שימוש לא טוב במטוס שלו. Technology is just so far ahead of government regulation and even of public understanding of what's happening out there. It's a wild west and this is where we are when you have a private secret company meeting state actors with no regulation in the cyber surveillance space and when it's possible to use military weapons against civilians. In some ways, we can talk about the impact on the company and say it's been really profound. A more pessimistic view would be to look at the entire industry, which remains unreformed, pretty wild, unregulated. An SO may vanish, but I feel no more secure talking in front of my phone now than I did. when we first published. You know, I don't think these issues have gone away. and other Frontline programs, visit our website at pbs.org slash frontline. Frontline's global spyware scandal exposing Pegasus is available on Amazon Prime Video.